The following is a rebroadcast of TV50's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. TV50 Sports and the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. From Sandy's Bowling Lanes in Wyndham, it's the $2,000 John Carponi Tour Championship. Split it. Look at this. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> right in the oh. pocket. Oh, there was never a doubt about that one. Look at ball. And now your host for Candlepin Stars and Swipes, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Sandy's Bowling Lanes on Route 28 in Wyndham for another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Glad to have you with us. This is the semifinal edition of the John Grapponi Ford Ladder Championship. We've had some terrific matches so far, and now we're getting into the big money. Yeah, we really haven't had the big scores that we uh, normally have, but close matches a couple weeks ago, one pin. Uh, last week, uh, Roger had uh, a little easier time of it. But uh, I think it's going to take all of that and a few more pins this week against Gary Carrington. All right, let's meet both of our bowlers for this week's program. First of all, our number two seed making his first appearance on the program from Plastow, New Hampshire. That's Gary Carrington. He comes in with a whopping 129 average. And like I said, he's been around a long time, bowls on both professional tours. And he's going to give Roger all he can handle. Should be a high-scoring match with uh, Gary Carrington. A 678 in the roll-off for Gary, and that was just six pins behind uh, first place Bob Kelly, who of course is waiting in the wings to play the winner of this match next week for the ladder championship. Well, we have a guy now uh, coming back for his third week in a row. He's uh, won matches his first two weeks, 352 and 362. His scores in the two matches, Roger Marku. Yeah, at the beginning of his last week's show, he said no one has won two matches in a row. Well, Roger's done it now, and now he's going for number three. But more important, he's working his way up to that $1,000 first place first place prize. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, we'll be back for the first string of today's three-string match. Of course, our uh, bonus ball contest has recycled back down to $10. We've had a couple of winners in recent weeks. We hope you have your cards in. If not, we'll be telling you more about that later on. But we'll be back with the first string of our match between Roger Marku and Gary Carrington right after this timeout. Don't go away. All right, before we get started, here's a look at what has been happening the last few weeks in this John Grapponi Ford Ladder Championship. Remember, extra prize money on the line. Roger Marku knocked off Chuck Langlois in his first appearance, and then last week beat Peter Comperchio, kind of breezing to an easy win uh, by comparison. The first week against Chuck Langlois, he won by one pin coming from behind to do it. And this week, he will go against number two seed Gary Carrington, and then the winner of this match today will meet Bob Kelly next week for the ladder championship. Gary Carrington all set to get us started on lane 32. Once again, uh, we have another bowler, uh, Dan, the fifth in a row, coming in, uh, making his first appearance with us on Stars and Strikes, but uh, that doesn't seem to matter because... Uh, these guys can throw the big scores, and we've seen some good bowling, uh, despite the fact that they've all been making their first appearance with us. Exactly. Gary Carrington on the WCBC Pro Tour last year was runner-up bowler of the year. Came in second in the standings to Tim Lipke. So uh, he's no stranger to the lanes at all, and he's a fine, fine canopin bowler. Just by way of comparison, Gary with that 678 in the roll-off, Roger Marku, his opponent today, with a 646. He just threw that ball about 40 miles an hour. We were talking about this uh, comparative speeds of the two of the six bowlers in this uh, ladder series. Of course, we've been if you haven't been with us the last few weeks, we have the benefit of a radar gun. Uh, compliments of John Grapponi Ford. We've been playing around with it the last few weeks. And, and there's a big strike for Gary Carrington in the second box. And uh, we were guessing that among the six, perhaps Gary or Bob Kelly next week might be the fastest of the six. As far as how quickly they get the ball down there. There you see a replay of that strike. And they fell down as fast as he threw the ball down there. And now Roger Marcoux. Two wins in a row, and he oh. starts with a strike with a little mixing action. Looked and like he was going to have the 2-4-7, and then all of a sudden, it was a strike. And a ball that was thrown only 31 miles an hour, and by the time it hit the pins, it was under 30 miles an hour. 
So you people make your own judgment whether or not speed plays a big part of this game. Just catching the head pin again and look at him go. Leaving the seven pin. And let's see if he'll have a shot at it. Wow. <laughs> that wood is flirting with <laughs> staying right in front of the pin. And Roger and waving it. to talk to it. <laughs> uh, sign language. Or towel language. <laughs> <laughs> the terrible towel. The terrible towel. $250 to the runner-up in this match. The winner moves on to take a shot at the $1,000 next week against Bob Kelly. And Roger just covers it, sneaking in the corner for the spare on strike. And a good start for Roger Marcoux. And we're still looking for that added bonus of a perfect game. And that's 10 pins or more in each frame. And you can see Roger Marcoux has got one going for two frames. Gary Carrington, of course, is locked out of this because it's a nine box to first box. Looking for the double. Oh, off the wall, he's gonna get it, yes. And he finally kicked the bucket. <laughs> Three, five, six, and nine, and took a little time, but you see off the right side wall, and finally the nine pin goes for Spare on strike. Consistently over 40 miles an hour. Nine pin drop. Let's see what, at impact, what it's, the speed is. Of course, on this lane, sometimes the bowler steps in front of the radar gun in it. <laughs> and you're measuring how fast the bowler moves. Moves, yeah. <laughs> I get the point of release, and then the bowler seems to move in front of it. Sometimes it stops the reading but we'll see if we can catch it if not i'll get it next time on 32. gary looks like he's going to have a clear shot at this seven pin looking for his third mark in a row and he's got it 40 miles an hour dropped to 38.2 by the time it hit the pins it's interesting that that seems to be what happens regardless of how fast the initial throw is that the drop off is usually a mile and a half or two, two miles, miles an hour. hour right. Oh. This is on a spare for Roger Marku. I think Roger realizes the caliber of Gary Carrington is going to take more than 350 to win. And he's perfect through three. All marks. Nancy Davis on the big scoreboard for us. Dennis Noel is our lob line judge. And Roger a little off target that time and he leaves the four horsemen. And Leads by seven. The wood settled in between those, well, it's right in behind that two pin. Looking to corral the four horsemen, no. Needs his pin. Keep this perfect game alive. Got it. Perfect through four, meaning 10 or more. Seven pin fill on the spare and Gary will tie it up after four at 65 apiece. Does better yes. than that. Strike on spare. Wow. Devastating. When he gets him going. Four marks in a row. Punching through that time. Still, he got six. It could have been worse. You go for the three, six, and ten. Try to grab the nine fill on the strike. And he does. Ninety-six through six for Gary Carrington. Look at those fills. Ten nine, ten nine. That's the key. And 
Man, Roger Marku is just tripped that nine pin. Otherwise, he had the seven and looking at the seven and nine. And here he wants the piece of wood to get out of the way, so he's going to have a clear shot at the seven. Looks like it's going to stay toward the middle of the lane, and he'll have a clear shot at it. Hang on. No, pull it to the left. But he's still perfect. This is about the farthest we've gone now in a perfect game. Five boxes. <laughs> and a 75 half when he trails by 12. <laughs> Crossing over, missing the Brooklyn hit. Four horsemen on the other side. One, three, six, and ten. <coughs> Looks good. Oh! Well, tough, tough pin for him. The 10 pin, keep the perfect game alive. I'd like to see somebody do it. Still alive. Through six. Perfect. Remember, it's a $25 bonus if he goes clean all the way through with a 10 or mark in every box. Gary Carrington leads by 11 through six. And again, punching. Last two boxes. A little fall in the head pin. Some help in there if he splits the three and the six. Hmm. Gary is one of those right handers who kind of inside outs the ball as he delivers. Yeah, that's a nice out. Maybe a ten, let's see. He hasn't pushed the button yet, he knows. <laughs> you gotta wait here. It is a nine though. Can't be too quick to push the button here at Sandy's. Because if you do, of course, you're conceding whatever has fallen to that point. Oh, very nearly picked up that half Worcester. But he's going to be open for three frames. Give it Roger a chance to climb back into this match a little bit. Being down by 11. Gary having to wait for Wood. Now he'll have a clear shot at the four pin. And take it out of there for the 10. So Roger Marku is just really one big mark behind here, trailing by 11. And oh, there's a big no mark. Matter. No <laughs> doubt about it. Perfect through seven. Now we're getting down there. The Crunch frames, the last three. Strike, I'd like to do that a few more times. Don't have to worry about picking up any pins there to keep his perfect game going. Looks good, a little full. All right, here's his first big test. Plus he wants to make sure he gets a good fill on the strike. Probably go three, six side. Three, six, five, and 10. Oh boy. Oh, well, it's gonna be a tough 10 to keep the perfect game. Going to be on the three pin, into the five, and hopefully into the four. Give it a try. Ooh. Nice try. He went for it. Have to well. take a seven, though. Well, it's close as we've come. Seven completed frames, he was perfect. Ten or more. Rogers already had one string a couple of weeks ago where he had just one open frame. Oh, he moved that pin right off the spot. Six pin. Three and six left with a 
Piece of wood resting against it. Spare for Gary Carrington. Just off target. Oh, I got a nice turn of the wood. Four horsemen to the left. One, two, four, and seven. Piece of wood in between the one and the two, which should help. Oh, he missed the object being the head pin. But he's going to have a fine opening game. 139. Make it 140. Good start for Gary Carrington. 11 pins above his average. And he has forced Roger Marcoux to mark twice here in order to catch up to him here in the first string. Take a look from behind Roger Marcoux, oh and there's boy. another big strike. Well, that's five trips now on lane 32 for Roger Marcoux in this frame, and four times he has marks. Three of them are strikes. Well, he's rolled that almost perfect game. Made one mistake in the, the eighth box on this lane. Missed the head pin this time. Last time he was just full in the head pin. Four horsemen left plus the nine. And he's got a piece of wood in between. Well, rest between the two and the four. Nope. Well, he'll be trailing, but it won't be by much. Four pins here, and if he picks these two up, it would be three. Gary Carrington had a nine in the last frame. And he does. 137 for Roger Marku, and... Uh, that was a 10. We missed it. She missed it on the monitor. It is 137. It's okay, 10. Okay, so it's a 140 for Gary Carrington and a 137 for Roger Marku, and a difference of three pins. We'll be back for the middle string and details on the bonus ball contest right after we take this time out. Don't go away. Roger Marcoux now to step up on lane 32. And just to review, Roger's had four marks in five tries on lane 32 so far in this match. Three of the four marks were strikes. And he's in there again. Boy, he's really throwing the ball good on lane 32. He just seems to hit a groove. Last two are good strikes in this one. Boy, could have been a strike. Nine pin drop leaves the five for a spare. Ooh, just slid by. Broke a little sharper this time to the left. I would like to have the radar gun on him that time. He might have slowed the ball down a little bit, causing it to break a little more at the end. No, no question that he threw that one a little bit faster yeah, that was than the one before. In fact, that was higher than he usually does. That was up almost 34. Which for Roger is really humming the ball because he doesn't, <laughs> usually, doesn't really throw that hard. Oh, nice shot. It won't go, but tried to play it inside. Almost converted. Reminder that upcoming uh, later on in our series here this year, we'll be, in fact, we'll be wrapping up this season with a ladder featuring mixed doubles competition. Looking forward to that. Chance for the ladies to appear here on Stars and Strikes for their first time in this season. Gary Carrington now on lane 32, working opposite two open frames. And he's got a spare leave to start. He'll get a turn on that wood, the 5-7. Well, Gary throws the ball consistently over 40 miles an hour, almost 41. And he played that without the wood. That was a nice shot. Again, didn't vary with the second ball either, 40.3. He 
You see Wood in the pin the same time. Carried the seven pin. Spare looking for the fill. Let's see if it makes any difference on a single pin. Big nine pin drop. And a 12 pin lead. Got it. Still started out over 40 miles an hour. Very consistent in his delivery and speed. Gary has seven marks already. First time in quite a few frames where he wasn't dead in the pocket on that lane 32. One, two, six, nine, and ten. Inside. Oh, nice yes. shot. Wow. Nicely done for Roger. You see the replay. He needed that one, too, after the two opens. This time he crossed over into the 1-2 pocket. Got a good fill of 7, 3, 5, 6 for another one. And he's got it. Nice shot. And we like to mention that Gary Carrington is perfect through two. Spare nine and then the spare. Looking for that first perfect game. And a $25 bonus. Compliments of John Graponi Ford. And oh. he's still perfect. Oh, oh wow. wow. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Had it tipped over and the wood stood it back up again. I think that piece of wood, yeah, it prevented it from going over. Right. Hit it just at the right time and stood it right straight back up again. Now the big question here is that wood out off the pin plate has to be checked and Dennis Noel comes back and says yes it is in play. But because of the wood there of course, the wood against the 8 pin that is, Gary does have a clear shot at it so it shouldn't really affect him. And he takes it. And he's perfect through three. Right on the head pin again and again, he moves a pin. Move that five pin over. Tough shot here though, because I don't know if the wood is angled right to carry the nine pin. We'll see what happens. No, it does. Got nice it. shot in four in a row. And, and a timeout, 56 with a spare up for Gary Carrington. Roger Marcoux at 36 with a spare up and we'll be back. More of the second string after these words. Roger Marku working on a spare in the fourth here in the second string. He trails by 23 in the match. And he's faced with trying to keep pace with a very, very hot Gary Carrington right One, now. One, five, and eight. Three fill. Watch out. And Roger will take a five. Not what he wanted to have happen. No. Right back on the head pin. The big five, two, four, and seven with a six and a 10. Trying to split that two and four. More important, he's start putting the marks back up. He can't let Gary and Carrington get out of sight. He was really late in his delivery that time. Actually releasing the ball a little bit, what we say, behind ourselves. Instead of carrying it out onto the lane. Like that one. Nice out. But just 13 in the two boxes and the way Gary Carrington is going, that could be costly. Good possibility of a perfect game with Gary going the way he is. Eight fill, four and eight. 74 after four? <laughs> wow. Well, got a tough piece of wood here. 
Unless he hits the four, the wood might deflect the ray from the eight. Mm. And left it short. Okay, needs this one to keep his perfect game going. And he's good. Leads by 33 in the match. And exactly halfway through the match, he has 224 total. Wow. Interesting shot. He's got 4-7 with the 3-pin, but the wood against the 4. He might play to play the 4 and have the wood swing back. No, I had to, he actually hit the wood first. He had to play the 4-pin clean. Again, another single pin. Keep the perfect game going. Seemed like he rushed this one a little bit, but no, he's right on it. Perfect through 6. Interesting sidelight, this extra bonus for a perfect game. I'm sure both bowlers are well aware of it, especially when it gets in the 6th, 7th, 8th frames like it is now for Gary Carrington. Well, all of a sudden, Roger Marku just isn't getting the drops that he was getting previously. Now, as we mentioned, the new pins on the lanes that we taped the show, and you can't be, well, too heavy or too light. You've got to be right in the pocket. And Roger, when he was throwing his strikes, was clearly three-quarters on the head pin. Good pocket hit. Now he's going a little bit heavy on the head pin, leaving himself to splits, as you see here. He'll take an eight. Now over on lane 31. Coming up short of the pocket. That wood may help him. Well, Roger was throwing almost 34, almost two miles an hour faster than he has the last few weeks. And I wonder, is Mr. the head pin not getting quite the breaks he was? Nice shot with a seven pin go. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how it didn't, and he's standing there looking at it. <laughs> Saying, how could you possibly stand up? So it'll be two more open frames for Roger. Eighty through eight. Again, the runner-up today receives a check for $250. Copy of Jim Fairhurst's book, The Light Side of Candlepin Bowling, courtesy of John Grapponi Ford, and the runner-up plaque from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden. The winner, of course, moves on to face our number one seed, Bob Kelly, next week. And we might mention that Bob Kelly has never lost here on Stars and Strikes. Okay, and there goes the perfect game with an eight box. And that may be the only two pins that he leaves standing up. Good cover. Here he's going to have a pretty sizable lead going into the third and final string. He has ten marks already. And Roger is just not on the head pin. No, he seems to have lost it the last three or four frames. Went full a couple times, missed the head pin altogether. The next few. And now he'll shoot at the high-low jack. It goes high. <laughs> Low and Jack are still hanging around. 88. Three, three eight boxes in the last four frames for Roger. Very unlike him. Not to mention the five box. It goes to seven. Leaves himself to two and the ten. Well, 
Never can tell. Ball's, ball's going to carry him off to the piece of wood next to the two. Whether it can go down and get the 10, well, let's see what happens. Yes, yes. up and over and down on top of that 10. <laughs> you see the ball disappear and it'll come back right down on top of that 10. There it is. And oh, the fill is wow. just three. One, eight, and nine. Two, three fills in that string for Roger. And both times he hit the head pin. Right. One, five, eight, first time, or one, five, nine, and then the one, eight, nine, that last time. Well, Gary Carrington is working on a spare here in the eighth. And he hits a deuce. But a 34 pin lead. Two more. And a nice out. The lead 37 in the match. Nice pocket hit. The five kicks out. And the 10 pin will stay with plenty of wood out front. And Gary was set to go and decided he'd wait. Yeah, the wood started to move on him. Gary doesn't waste too much time if no, he, doesn't he doesn't have to wait. Easy spare for him, and he may match his 140 of the first game. We made, might alert the truck to uh, keep check of the time. Gary does move right along. And it will be a 138 this time. And a two string total of 278. So it'll be a 40 pin advantage for Gary Carrington with one string to go. And Roger Mark, who will have to come up with a big third string. We'll come back, see if he can do it right after these messages. Gary Carrington with a comfortable 40 pin lead heading into this final string. And a good shot at a 400 triple. Well, that looked like a pretty good ball going in. 2 4 7 with a 6 and a 10. Still looking for that perfect game. You're really fascinated by this, aren't you? I really am. <laughs> I, I, you know. It's really a unique situation for a bowler to knock down every single pin. It's very hard to do. And since they started this promotion across the state, um, we instructed all of our league secretaries at, at Boutwells to, to let us know and copy down and verify those perfect games. And we've had about, uh, oh, I think last count, about a dozen. But there were 27 or 28 here at Sandy's. So. Right on the spare, spare for Gary. That is his 12th mark. Ten of them have been spares. He got the two strikes early. He's been all spares since then, and he's been very, very consistent. Hit a lot of single pin spares. Getting big fills with the exception of one half Worcester. Well, Roger can't waste any time. He's got to start putting his marks up right away. He's got to be thinking about a 150 or a 160 game anyway right. to have a chance. Four horsemen plus the eight in the back. Right on it, but it won't go for him. Those of you who would like to join us for a Stars and Strikes taping, we will be able to tell you in a couple of weeks when our next taping date is. Here at Sandy's, it be sometime in March.
There's the ball he was throwing that first game. Solid nine pin drop, eight pin left. And he's got to match Gary Carrington's spare and then put a few extra ones up by himself and hope uh, Gary cools off. Shows no signs of it. 278 after two to 238 for Roger Marku. That March taping, by the way, will be our last one of the season before we head off for summer break. Nice shot. Use the wood effectively and carry him the ball off that back piece of wood into the eight. Nice shot. Elected to stay away from that front piece, which I think was a good idea. No, oh, Gary threw his hands up. Let that one slip away. He's still got a six drop, though. See if Gary slowed up on his ball at all. And put the gun on him. Oh, right around 40. 37 9 when it hits the pins. And a nice little kick on the 8 pin to drop out his 13th mark of the day. You see him splitting the 1 and 3, and Wood nudges that 8 pin with a spare and spread eagle time. I'm sure Gary's not too happy about these fills, the six and now the four, but any fill at all on the mark, and he's just helping himself because he does have the 40-pin lead. It forces Roger to get another mark, and right now Roger's down to eight frames left. 49 through four for Gary. Roger Marku comes up on a spare. Missing the head pin, takes six. Oh, wood settled nicely in between the one and the two. It's like if he's on that head pin, the wood should use it. Should cause a deflection for the two, four, and seven. Huh. Two, four, uh, two, and seven around the four. Roger doesn't need those kind of breaks. He's got the 10. Trails now by 44. Gets a mark here. He'll have a chance to cut into the lead. Won't be easy. 4, 7, 6, 10. Little pieces of wood out front. Well, it's going to go either end of that front piece of wood and have the ball carry him and get two of them and the piece of wood get the others. I think he's going to try to get the ball, have the ball take the six and a ten. Mm. Oh, just missed it. Roger lives in Summersworth, New Hampshire. He works at Davidson Rubber in Dover. Bowls out of the rollaway, bowlaway lanes in Rochester. And he will stop at 44 through the first four. Gary Carrington in command with a 45-pin lead. And we'll have the final six boxes on Stars and Strikes after we have these messages. Don't go away. Gary Carrington. Making his first appearance on Stars and Strikes and apparently about to make it a profitable one as he has a 45 pin lead with six frames remaining. And another mark. I don't know how many single pin spares he's picked up, but there have been a bunch of them. At least four. Well, he wanted to worry about a single that time. No, sir. <laughs> uh, quick strike. This time he blows that five pin out. Last time he left it standing and nothing touched the five. And here, the five is one of the last ones to go. Five and the eight. Oh, boy. 
One, five, and nine. beginning to look like our number one and two seeds are going to square off for the championship next week. It is indeed, and that should be a great match. It really should be. On paper, those two bowlers are two of the finest. And see them lock heads is going to be a lot of fun to watch. And if past history has anything to do with it, it should be a high-scoring, superbly done match, I'm sure. Probably see a lot of nice spares being made. But I want a perfect game, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Nigari had a nine frame in the first box, and he's been perfect since then yeah. in this game. Roger Marco in his three weeks here has twice had games where he was open in only one frame. That is, open without at least a ten box. Nine for Roger. Gary Carrington has 15 marks already with four boxes left. This is on a strike. Oh, nice well, he try. gave it a ride. Watch out. Backwards. Just missed mm. that seven. Gary's going to get his 400, unless he has a bad box somewhere along the way. This time the two and the eight, with wood in the middle. Nice shot. See the replay. The ball stays, deflects up and into the eight pin for the spare. And Gary's on his way to a 400 series also. Get and Roger, Roger finally gets a break. That's his fourth strike, but three of them came in the first string, and he's been kind of quiet since then. He had a 137 opening game, but then slipped to a 101 middle. Oh, left that one out to the right. Twenty-two is the magic number for Gary Karen the 400 series, and he's rolling right now to 128 clip. Plus, he's got a spare up here in the eighth. So chances are he's going to go over 400. And that's eight, nine, five pin. Directs the wood out of the way. It's a clear shot at that kingpin. And he'll have his 400, just a matter of how much over 400 he's going to go. Mark number 17. And he's at 405 right now, plus the fill. Four thirteen. 
And he's going to have another shot at a spear. Covers the five, he'll get the seven. And just like that, nice shot. You see the replay. Wood makes that shot look awful easy. 145 plus this ball. And a big eight, Phil, a 153. And a three string total, 431 for Gary Carrington. He will be moving on to take on Bob Kelly next week. Roger Marcou will finish it out and we will fill you in on his final score when we come back. We'll talk to both bowlers and have the bonus ball contest when we return. Don't go away. And back we are talking with Roger Marcou, our runner-up for today's show. We wound up, uh, Roger did, with a 110 in that third string for a three-string total of 348. And uh, you have the check for $250. I know you would have liked more, but uh, it just didn't happen for you in this match. No, that's the way it goes, and Gary bowled very well, so he'll go on. Should be a good match, the last one. Tough to beat a, uh, a 431, which is it what is. Gary had. It certainly is. All right, we have the uh, the runner-up plaque for you, too, uh, Roger, from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden, and, of course, the big uh, $250 check. We appreciate your coming here. Some great bowling. We hope to see you again. Thank you. I hope so. All right, Roger. Thank you very much. Roger Marcoux, ladies and gentlemen, our runner-up, and after having won two in a row, falls today. Roger from Summersworth. All right, Gary Carrington up on lane 32. We're going to see if we can uh, have another winner in our bonus ball contest. Hope you have your... Uh, cards in and uh, we'll be recycling now and looking for a ten dollar jackpot with a number five so Gary you can come on over and we'll chat here in just a second Charlie Finley of course the general manager of uh, John Grapponi Ford helping us out not a match for Joyce Wilson of Manchester who chose nine so Joyce will be receiving a TV 50 NHCBA desk pen and uh, as far as you're concerned, Gary, of being the number two seed, I guess this is what you were looking for, a chance for the big money. That's right. I uh, get the ball Bob Kelly right now. That's what I came in here for. And uh, Bob's a, a good one. That should be a good match. Yeah, Bob's a very good bowler. We bowled on a world team uh, tournament at Bangor. We're world champions. He's on my team. So it ought to be a good one. Well, congratulations <laughs> on a great uh, 431, and we'll be looking for more of the same next week. Okay, thank you very much. All right. That's Gary Carrington. He'll be going for the big money uh, next week against Bob Kelly, the numbers one and two seeds. Charlie Finley from John Grapponi Ford will be here. Dan Murphy will be too. We hope you'll join us here at Sandy's. Doug Brown for the whole TV50 Sports crew. So long, everybody.